Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word. So I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. full trust and my full love and I believe you will bless me more so I can give more in Jesus name Amen how many of you are happy raise your hand so our talk title for today is called, A Basket Full of Blessings. A Basket Full of Blessings. We are actually down to our last talk. The message for today, I want you to preach this. I want you to turn to your favorite friend. Sino man yon? Turn to that person right now and say, Friend, make miracles happen. Make miracles happen. Where do, what are miracles, by the way? If you were going to take the, the intellectual definition of what a miracle is, you know, the scientific expert definition of a miracle, a miracle is something that is so unbelievable, it's so improbable that it cannot be comprehended by our human understanding. It, it, oftentimes, it's something that we do not understand, so we attribute it to a supreme being, a higher being. That's what a miracle is if you look at it from the intellectual perspective. But do you want a simpler definition of what a miracle is? Do you want a simplified version? How many people are here from UP, graduated from the University of the Philippines? Raise your hand. Come on, UP people. Would you agree with me if I say that a miracle is the UP Maroons winning the UAAP championship last time? Yeah? They haven't done that in 36 years. That's a miracle. Our dear, dear friend, it's also a miracle that our dear, dear friend, our very own, Doc Ryan Capitulo, you know him, the builder of Feast S. Manila. A miracle is that he was able to abstain from eating rice for six months and thereby losing 65 pounds along the way. That's a miracle, right? Miracles are all around us. Everybody say, miracles are, here. miracles are here. 
Where do miracles come from, by the way? If there's anything that we've learned all throughout the Gospel of Matthew that we studied for over two years, it's the fact that the specialty of Jesus, they're miracles, right? The source of every miracle in the world is Jesus. I mean, when we read the Bible, we see how Jesus did so many miracles. He performed miracles left and right. Remember that time when Jesus healed that paralytic man who was lying on the mat? Just by saying your sins are forgiven and then he says, get up and walk. And then the man picked up his mat. That was a miracle. Another miracle was when Jesus healed the daughter of the synagogue leader by the name of Jairus. Jairus met up in, with Jesus and although she was so sick, by the time that Jesus came to her, she was already dead. But Jesus healed her and raised her from the dead. That was a miracle. Remember the time when Jesus healed the centurion's servant? The centurion came to Jesus and although Jesus was not even present in the servant's uh, area, the centurion said, just by your mere word, my, centurion, my, my servant will be healed. That was a miracle. What is this trying to tell us? You know, two things. Two common things that we see in those miracle stories that I just told you. Number one, plain and simple, Jesus is the miracle maker. Amen. Can you say that with me? Jesus is the miracle maker. Plain and simple. Every miracle, every good thing that has happened that was a miracle came from Jesus up above. But here's the second thing, the second common thing. If you notice, in those miracle stories that I just mentioned, Jesus gave a miracle, but He used somebody else to make the miracle happen. Think about it. If the first miracle, if the friends of the paralytic man did not create a hole in the roof to lower down his friend, the miracle would not have happened. If Jairus did not meet up with Jesus on behalf of his daughter to ask for healing, the miracle would not have happened. If the centurion did not have that kind of faith, the miracle would not have happened to the servant. What am I trying to say? God is so eager to give you a miracle. How many of you believe that? He's just so eager and excited to give you a miracle. But oftentimes, God will use somebody else to make that miracle happen. Look at the person beside you. You'll never know. You're just sitting there, but God might use that very person to make the miracle happen in your life. Because God will oftentimes use people, other people, to make miracles happen. And I don't know about you, but I see that miracles happen here at the feast. How many of you believe that? God uses His church to create miracles. I mean, look around you. We don't have, even have to look so far. Think about this. Our very own leader and founder, Brother Bo Sanchez himself. He's a walking miracle. Brother Bo, once upon a time, he was, what, a sex addict? He was addicted to pornography. He was molested at a young age. You know this. He shares this with everybody. He was an approval addict. But what God did to him, turned his life around, he is one of the most humble, generous, and loving people that you will ever meet. He's a walking miracle. The person who preached to you last Sunday, Brother Philip Sumera, he preached a wonderful message, didn't he? What did he say? He said that God wants to renew you. I pray that you receive that message. If you did not, go back to our archive, if FB page, YT channel. It's all over there. Go back to that message that God wants to renew you. But you know, once upon a time, Lep was a black sheep. He was a black sheep. But what God did to him, turned his life around, he tur God turned Lep from becoming a black sheep into a good shepherd. Imagine that. All by the grace of God. And you know, whenever I look at myself in the mirror, I know that I'm a walking miracle as well. Because I never graduated from college. Some of you know this. And this is not an encouragement to the students to follow my same journey. We all have different journeys. I never graduated from college because of two back subjects. Two back subjects that I did not like. The first subject was ROTC. <laughs> ROTC, my goodness. You know why I didn't like ROTC? Nothing against it. But it was because my school was relatively small. We did not have the system to do ROTC in our campus. So what they did was they outsourced it to a different school. And it so happened that they outsourced it to UP. One of the most radical, I mean, UP took ROTC seriously. They required every cadet to be in the sunken garden on a Sunday morning at 6 a.m. So guess what? I needed to wake up at 5 o'clock. Never did it. 
I would play tennis with my brother every morning on Sunday. So I never graduated because of ROTC. But the other subject that I could not pass because I didn't like it so much, you'll be surprised by this, it was theology, religion. I grew up in a religious household, but I was never religious when I was growing up. And so I never liked the subject. But you know how God turned my life around? For the last 12 years, I have been doing the two things that I hated the most. I would wake up on a Sunday morning at 5.30 in the morning to do what? To talk about God's love. God is amazing. So don't ever let this tell somebody here that just because you think you're not qualified for something, it doesn't mean that you're completely disqualified because God is the one who qualifies you. I am completely unqualified to preach here every Sunday. I never pass theology. But God's love is amazing. God, God, God does miracles. And we see here, here at the feast how we've seen miracles. How many of you have seen miracles happen at the feast? Raise your hand. Come on. You've experienced a miracle here in the community. How many times have we seen, you know, families relationships that have been broken and separation has happened but then through the feast they come together and God heals their relationship how many times have you seen people who have been sick people who have broken bodies and broken spirits be restored through the feast because of the grace of God how many people have you seen penitents people who have walked away from Jesus come back and have life with Him again. I'm telling you, miracles happen here at the feast. You've experienced the miracle here at the feast, yes. Two reasons why I believe why we experience miracles here at the feast. The first is, I've already mentioned it. It's because Jesus is here. By the grace of God, when the grace of God comes into our life, there's healing, there's mercy, there's love. But the second reason... Second reason, and I believe this to be true, you know, one of the greatest miracles that we will have here at the feast is the fact that we have grown so much. I mean, look around you. This is not normal. I mean, having church in PICC, I grew up in a very small parish in Taitai Rizal. Being here in this big, big venue, this is not normal. For some of you, this is the, for, for the first timers, this is not normal for you. What God is doing here in our community and the reason why, you know, I believe that we've grown so much. By the way, did you know that we're celebrating our 42nd anniversary this month? Can we give a clap offering to the Lord for that? I want you to tell your neighbor right now, you're part of this family. You're part of this family. You're part of the story of this community. 42 amazing years. I'm 44 years old. Can you believe that? 44 years old. Brother Bo was already preaching while I was still two years old. And yet he doesn't look like he's over 40 years old. Now that is a miracle, right? 42 amazing years. Now why do we grow that big? Because of God's grace. I mean the feast is international. We're all over the world. But the second reason why we've grown is because of the givers. Without the resources of people, we would not have grown this big. And let me tell you this. God's grace is free has no cost. But guess what? This venue, we have to pay in order to be here. The food suppliers that feed our servants, it's not free. The sound system that you enjoy whenever we worship the Lord, it's not free. The aircon that you're here, it's not free. I wish it were free, then it would be a miracle. But then you know what the miracle that's happening right now? Because we've got good suppliers, we're actually feeding the families of these, the, the, the people serving us. So it's a miracle that's going around. But you know, I thank God for the givers. I thank God for every person that God uses to give to the ministry. People who don't give out of surplus but give out of sacrifice. There are people here, I'm telling you, people I know who own businesses, people who are bosses, but they're struggling. And yet, they continue to give. Why? Because they believe that God deserves their giving. Because they believe that God is good and they love God. And so they believe that God is the source of their blessing to begin with. And I want you to know this, my friends. Some of you might be asking, Brother Odi, san ba napupunta yung ating mga tay? The offerings that we give. I want to show you this, this, this video very quickly. Let me just explain. 
since time immemorial, before I was even the builder, um, before you show the video, can we hold that? Before, th before I even became the builder, we were already giving to our mercy ministries. You know that. We got Anoim, Grace to be Born, He Cares. We got so many amazing mercy ministries. But you know what? I realized when I prayed about it, I prayed, Lord, how can we give more to those who are not as supported by the other, the other um, communities and other feasts? And, you know, I kept on praying about it. And God would send us people, institutions and organizations. And one of the ministries that was sent our way is a prison ministry that's being led right now by Brother John Escoto, the district leader of Laguna. And I want you to see this video and open your heart. This is a video taken of the prison ministry in action. Can, can we show the video? Turn off the lights and show the video. Thank you, guys. Si Lord. You know what Brother John does there? It's, it's not easy. The ministry of the, the, this prison ministry that goes to different prisons and precincts that talk to people who are behind bars, hindi po madali. Brother John shared with me in passing, and this is what convicted me to help, for us to help them. He says to me, Bro, alam mo ba kung yung narinig ko sa Nung kausap ko yung isang prisoner doon, sabi niya. He was talking to one of the prisoners and he said, I found out what their budget is for the food that they eat. And you're gonna be shocked by this because he asked me, Hulaan mo bro, magkano yung budget nila per meal sa kinakain nila? Hulaan nyo. How, how many of you say, just by raising your hand, 100 pesos per day? Anybody? No one? 50 pesos. 50 pesos, we have 50 pesos. 20 pesos. 20 pesos, 20 pesos. 15 pesos, anybody? 15. 
Hindi po. Mali po lahat yun. Budget nila per meal is 13 pesos. Not 30, 13, one, three. Sabi nung isang nakakulong kay Brother John, sabi niya, bro, ang parati namin kinakain dito, kanin na may halong sabaw. Swerte mo na lang kung may mahalong buto. I mean, 13 pesos. 13 pesos is something you have in your bag that you never touch. 13 pesos is spare change that we leave lying around in the house and that's their meal for the day. 39 pesos to feed one prisoner. That's the budget. So when I heard that, sabi ko, bro, tulong kami. <laughs> we want to help. Because you know what they're doing? They're not actually giving budget for the food. Because we found out that when it was pandemic time, you know what they struggled with? Wala silang panligo. Because they would only rely on their family members and their friends who would visit to bring the toiletries. Sabon, shampoo, tissue paper. Kaya nakita yung binibigay? Rejoice, sun silk, sabon. Yun ang wala sila. So, with the little help that we give them, I told Brother John, bro, we will pledge to give every time. We're giving already to our mercy ministries. We've already pledged. All of our tithes go to, to be distributed, but we're making an extra pledge to help out this ministry in special because we want to help these people who feel so unloved and maybe hopefully by the grace of God, they will feel that there is a God who loves them so much and it's because of your giving that that happens. So please thank the person beside you one more time and say, thank you, friend. Importante, alam nyo kung saan napupunta yung binibigay nyong pera na alam kung binagpapaguran nyo. It goes to a good charity, to a good cause. But why do we tithe? Why do we give to God's kingdom? Did you know that whenever you drop something in the envelope and into the basket, that is very biblical, where does it come from? It comes from the book of Malachi. God says in the book of Malachi, and this is so important, this is so good. God says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Why? So that there will be enough food in my temple. And God says, if you do, I will open the windows of heaven for you. And I will pour out a blessing so great, you won't have enough room to take it in. And then God says, try it. Put me to the test. The Lord is daring somebody here. I dare you to trust God. Put something in the offering basket and then see how God will bless you. Tithe. Everybody say tithe. If you're new to church language, you're probably new to that. What is that word, tithe? Tithe. Ano ba yan, tithe? Tithe is an Anglo-Saxon word that, says, that, that means theota. It means a tenth. Everybody say a tenth. A tenth. That's why we say the recommendation whenever you give to the Lord, you give 10% of the first fruits of your labor, your first income. Every income that you get, you give 10% to the Lord. That's very biblical. It says in the book of Malachi, but here's the Tagalog word for tithe. It means ikapu. Sabihin nyo lahat, ikapu. Yan ang Tagalog word. No wonder, whenever you, you drop an offering in the basket, kaya pala yung iba sa inyo sinasabi, naikupu. Parang masakit. Ayaw bitawan. Diba? You use tithe in a sentence para hindi ako makapagbigay. Tithe ako ngayon eh. Bisa lang hirap magbigay kay Lord. Tithe. But we need to tithe. Why? Because it's really for the Lord's kingdom. It's really how we love the Lord. So I want to thank you for tithing. I want to thank you for giving. But what is the connection between tithing and making miracles happen? Now, this is where we read the gospel. What is the connection between giving to the Lord and then making miracles happen? Let's go and consult St. John. John chapter 6, verse 10 to 13. I'm going to read it to you. Some of you will know this story already. And it says that after this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. I wonder, people used to follow Jesus just because he healed the sick. I wonder if you're following Jesus just because of the things that you can get from him and not because you want him. Think about that for a moment. Are you following Jesus just because he can give you a miracle or are you following him because you want him in your life? 
And then it says in verse 3, Then Jesus climbed the hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. And then Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. And then turning to Philip, one of the disciples, he asked, Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip for he already knew what he was going to do. This is actually very funny. Jesus, the word that became flesh, is asking a question. He knows the answer. But there's a reason. I'll tell you in a moment. And Peter, Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? And daming tao, Lord! Jesus says in verse 10, Tell everyone to sit down, just like you're sitting down now. Jesus is about to perform a miracle when you're sitting down and listening to him. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes and the men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish and they ate as much as they wanted. My goodness. After everybody was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So what did they do in verse 13? They picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. Let me preach this. How many of you know this story already? Raise your hand. It's a famous story. The multiplication of the loaves or the feeding of the 5,000. But did you know this? Quick trivia. Did you know that there, o- that there are only two miracle stories in the whole New Testament? that you can find in all four Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels. First miracle story is the resurrection of Jesus. You find that in all four Gospels. The second miracle story is this one. What is this trying to tell us? It's telling us that Matthew and Mark and John and Luke, it's so important that it needed to be told more than once by one person. They needed to inform some people about it. Now, what is the miracle there? The miracle there is very simple. That Jesus was able to stretch five loaves and two fish in order to do what? To feed five, more than 5,000 mouths. To stretch food. How many of you want that same gift? To stretch things in your life. You want to have that gift? To stretch your patience to your loved ones? Yeah? You want to have that gift to be able to stretch your time to the people around you? You want that gift? You want to get, have that gift to stretch your salary? Huh? Yung iba sa inyo dito, hindi naman sa pagmamayabang. Wala pang Pasko, pero yung Christmas bonus, ubus na. Bakit? Pambayad na. Ng utang. How many of you want to be able to stretch the meals in your, in your home? You will never ever have to cook for your family. Only rice, only ulam. Saya nun, di ba? Meron akong kaibigan, naalala ko to. Hindi natatapos kumain. Grabe kumain to. Bakit? Ganito siya kumain. Kakain siya. Sarap niya kumain. So kain siya. Papansin niya, paubos na yung kanin. So kuha siya konting kanin. Kain siya ulit. Papansin niya, paubos na yung ulam. Kuha siya konting ulam. Pansin niya ulit, paubos na na may kanin. Dagdaga ng konting kanin. Hindi natatapos. Only appetite. What is this trying to tell us? Why did this miracle even happen in the first place? Two reasons. And I've been preaching this to you all morning long. The first reason is because Jesus got involved. Jesus is our miracle maker. Whenever Jesus gets involved, what happens? Miracle happens. Right? When was the last time that you involved Jesus in your life? Do you involve Him every day or just whenever you have problems, whenever you need something, then you inform Jesus. Lord, there's this bill that needs to be paid. Lord, there's this sickness that needs to be healed. Why don't you try this instead? Instead of just informing God about your problems, why don't you involve God in your problems? I used to say this, and I, I, I know it sounds so good. I always say, you know, at the end of the day, when you've given it your, your best shot, when you've done it your way, now it's time to do it God's way. It sounds nice, right? But actually, it's not right. Because before you can even get to the end of the day, at the start of the day, you need to already involve Jesus. I'm going to teach you something very practical, okay? Lep kind of preached about this last Sunday where he said, 
when you work, you work as if you're working for, for, for the Lord. Like you're working in God's garden. So every morning, what do you do? The moment you wake up, four powerful words. You wake up, and I want you to say this. Lord, let's do this. Can you say that with me? Lord, let's do this. One more time. Lord, let's do this. Imagine when you say that in the morning. You're already focusing that, Lord, I'm going to bring you to my meeting. Lord, I'm going to bring you to my project. Lord, I'm going to bring you to my date. Kasama mo si Lord sa lahat ng pupuntahan mo. Lord, let's do this. I'm doing this with you. And I'm telling you that when you involve Jesus, that's when miracles happen in your life. You want to know why the first miracle of Jesus was at a wedding in Cana? Remember that, that, that miracle? He turned water into wine. Some people ask, why did Jesus pick that wedding? Were they special people? Was it a special event? You know, when you go to the Holy Land, you will realize that Cana, where that happened, it's such an obscure place. It's so obscure that, that there was nothing going on in that place. You know, no celebrities there, no, 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 no famous people there. But why did Jesus choose that wedding in Cana to perform His very first miracle? Now, some of you might say, that, you know, because Mama Mary told Him. Because they were in trouble. And we all know that, you know, when you listen to your mom, miracles happen. Can I get an amen from all the moms? <laughs> but actually, I got another theory. And it's a simplified theory. Yes, that might have been true because he listened to Mama Mary. But here's my simplified version. It's a simpler version. That the reason why Jesus chose that place and that event to do his first miracle was because he was invited. Ah. Oh. Kita ko yung itsura nyo. Ah, di ba? Napakasimple. Kung hindi siya invitado, paano niya magagawa yung miracle? He was invited. What if you invite Jesus in your life and witness how He will do the miracles in your life? It's a simple invitation. Lord, let's do this. Every day. Lord, let's do this. Here's the second reason why that miracle happened and why every miracle in your life will happen is that others got involved. Others got involved. Let me go quickly. It says... What did Jesus say? Jesus asked Philip, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. You know, Jesus didn't need the disciples to do the miracle, right? He didn't need, you know, Philip and Peter in order to do any of these miracles. But what did he do? He says, where can we buy bread? What is Jesus doing here? Jesus is involving, involving the disciples. In other words, to paraphrase that, Jesus was saying, you and I, were in this together. I'm the miracle maker, but you can take part in the miracle. And if there's something that I believe we need to learn today, this is it. Because right now, we live in a divided world. There's more of me than we. I mean, just look around you in social media. There's so many people fighting with each other. There's no real unity. We say unity, but the truth is, you know, we're envious whenever we see that our friend is experiencing more abundance. We get jealous when our single friend, you know, eventually has a partner and has a fiancé and, and, and we're left behind. We feel like there should be unity, but it's hard to have unity. But what Jesus is trying to tell us that when we come together... Miracles happen. Miracles happen. And the truth is, my friends, God doesn't need you and me. That's the harsh reality. He doesn't need you and me in order to perform a miracle. But what is He doing? He's involving us because He wants you to be involved. To be a little kinder. To be a little more compassionate. To be a little more understanding. To do small acts. And maybe, just maybe, with those small acts that you do, when you offer it in the name of Jesus, He will turn that little into a lot. Because I believe this, that there's no such thing as a simple act. There's no act that is too simple. No generosity that is too little for God to not be able to turn into a miracle. You let Jesus turn your efforts and He will turn your small efforts into a great, great, impact for people. Mother Teresa said this, 
do small acts with great love, and that will create great impact around us. God can use you to bless others, to make a miracle happen in the lives of other people. Can we clap our hands for the Lord? Can I invite you to stand up as we close? I want to read to you again that part where Jesus says and questions Philip, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? And then Philip replies to Jesus this way. Philip replies, you know, even if we worked for months, Jesus, we wouldn't have enough money to feed all these people. We wouldn't have enough. Everybody say, not enough. I wonder how many people feel like that sometimes. Like, you don't have enough. Kulang, in other words. Kulang ang pangmatrikula. Kulang ang pangdate. Kulang ang panginvest. Kulang ang pangbakasyon. Kulang ang panginvest. Kulang. 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 How many of you feel like that? Like sometimes, you know, there's really lack in your life. Lord, kulang na naman ako ngayon. Short pa lang ako. You ever had those moments yung parang feeling mo walang wala ka na? This is why it's important to involve Jesus. Yung walang, 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 wala ka na. Pero naniniwala ka, pinagdasal mo kay Lord. May dumadating. Amen. Hindi man sobra, pero sapat. It's enough. It's enough. And I want to encourage you, if in case, go ahead, clap your hands. It's a good place to clap. I want to encourage you, just in case you feel like you're one of those people. This is for me, Brother Odi. Feeling ko kulang talaga. Kulang, kulang budget ko. Kulang. I want to encourage you with how this story ends. And it says in verse 11, listen to this. You know what happens after everything? After everybody has gotten their fill? It says, and they all ate as much as they wanted. And after everybody was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled how many? How many? Twelve baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. They started out with nothing. Five loaves, two fish. One bite. That would have been just one bite per person. Not even a bite, just a nibble. They went from having one bite to experiencing a buffet. I mean, this is Jesus, my friends. He's a miracle maker. And the message of the gospel today is that you will, rather, let me place it this way. The message of the gospel today is not that you will never go hungry again. The message is not that you will never get depressed again or that you will never get lonely again or that you will never get discouraged again or that you will never find yourself in a bad place again, or that you will never have a need again. The message of the gospel today is loud and clear. That even if you experience all these lack, there is a living bread. There is enough for everybody to taste. There's enough of Jesus for everybody here. And the beautiful promise, my friend, is that when you leave, may sobra pa. There's leftovers. Twelve basket full. I wonder how many of you are receiving this right now. That when you give your life to Jesus, you don't leave empty-handed. You leave with a basket full of blessings. May bit-bit ka. May bit-bit ka. Lalabas ka dito, puno. Pumasok ka dito kanina, kulang. I'm claiming and I'm declaring that when you leave this place, you're going to leave with leftovers. You're going to carry leftovers. You're going to go out into the world full of love, full of hope that you're going to give to people who need it the most.
It is so beautiful to be in the presence of God. And can we pray right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I want you just to lift up to Him all your needs. Whatever you're going through, He knows what you're going through. He knows where you're coming from. He knows the burdens of your heart. Just, just bring it up to God and say, Lord, I surrender everything that all hurt and all pain and all worries and all fear. Lift them all up to you, Lord. I surrender them to you. You are my king and you are the center of my life. And I trust you and I know that you are blessing me right now. I receive your love. I receive your joy. I receive your peace. I receive your healing. I receive your provision in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Live a fantastic life.